take two on this I forgot the fam was on you couldn't hear me but on to the video I want to talk about running co2 in a grow tent can you do it should you do it how do you do it all the above I get asked this question pretty frequently I'm surprised it took me this long to make a video on it um, I mean it does make sense a lot of people do use grow tents I use grow tents in the past closets in the past and it kind of applies to anything that's not a self-built room right so uh, I'm going to get into it, give you my opinions on should you, can you, how do you do it, and maybe some other ways you can get passive uh, CO2, uh, you know, no cost free CO2, kind of things that maybe will help you if, if those options are available to you. So to hop right into it, can you run CO2 in a grow tent? Well, yeah, you can do whatever the hell you want to do, right? You can just throw CO2 outside if you really wanted to. It don't make a difference. Should you do it? That depends. So what it depends on is... The situation that you're in, because if your grow tent is sitting in a big open room that's going to be vented all the time, it's going to not going to be ideal, right? Because no matter how well you seal that grow tent, it's always going to leak CO2. Even if you taped up every zipper, tied off all the exhaust ports, everything, sooner or later, you're going to have to open it up. There it all goes, right? So you're going to have to get in there and you're going to have to be able to cool it or heat it which means if you have an AC unit in there, a portable AC unit, especially if it's a single hose, it's gonna create negative pressure because it's pulling air out of the tent. So it's, it's gonna like suck air in from the outside. So it's constantly just, you know, exchanging air, right? And then you, you'll notice, you'll see the tent will suck in. Uh, a dual hose is better. So if you're gonna do it, a dual hose works out because that'll pull air in through one hose back out. So in theory, it's not supposed to create any negative pressure. I've had a dual hose here. You guys have seen it in the past. I ran it out. It, it, I tried to seal the best I could. It still created negative pressure so much so that opening the door was a struggle. My girl had to put her foot on the door one time and yank because like you could, it was hard to open the door. So even with trying, it creates a lot of negative pressure, which just means it's every time it, it finds a little gap or it'll force little gaps, it'll make holes to pull that air in because it's got to come from somewhere and expunge it. When that, and even that, when I was using a dual hose in this sealed room that I built, uh, I was running through a CO2 tank every, that big one right there, 50 pound, every about 30 days. Now that I don't have that, I have a mini split and it doesn't create negative pressure, it lasts me almost three months. Huge, huge difference. Now you can imagine, even with a 50 pound tank, how fast you would go through that in a, uh, you know, a grow tent, right? So it's not ideal. If you're gonna do it and you wanna to try to do it, some of the ways I would personally recommend doing it is way one would be getting a room you can do this in and sealing said room, right? Say you got a spare bedroom, throw a couple tents in that bedroom, seal that room up the best you can. If you're gonna heat it or you're gonna cool it, do ways it's not gonna create negative pressure. A dual hose, don't use a single hose mini split. Dual hose mini split, do your absolute best to seal it up. You're probably gonna have to get your own ducting and not the ducting that comes with it. However you do it, do it, it's, and do your best, right? You can use window AC units. They don't, those don't create negative pressure, but it's, you don't seal around it very well, and that's kind of where the problem comes in. As long as everything that should be outside the window is outside the window, and it's sealed extremely well, there's, nothing's perfect, but that's gonna keep your CO2 in, or just the mini split is very easy because it's just lines that run out, and there's a whole other unit outside. It's probably the most, it's the best way, right? It's the best way to do it, opposed to just because it's a ductless mini split. It's basically the same concept as what you have in your house, except your house has ducting everywhere. So it's a little bit more uh, convoluted, complex, and really unnecessary for grow style stuff, which is why a lot of them just use mini splits because it's just one room that you're doing. You don't need running it all over the place, right? Like a house does. So that's why you would do that. And then you seal that room up though. Try to seal around the door. I have a, one of those weather doors on this room. Uh, so it, it came with like the weather stripping on it. And even then I tried to seal around it a little bit extra because it, it was forcing gaps and ruining like the seal. So do your best to try to seal that in. Get a little PPM meter, like 20 bucks on Amazon. Uh, do it that way, seal the room, and there you go. You don't need to exhaust or vent out your room. It's just gonna waste CO2. You're gonna be going in and out that door anyhow. Trust me, you don't need to exhaust it. You can, if you want to, that's fine, but it's not needed and I personally want it because that's just wasting CO2. Now, what are some ways you can get passive or free CO2? So in the past, I've done multiple ways. I've had a grow rooms in my closet that was in a game room, right? I would, so I was in there with the door shut playing 
well, this is back in the day. So I was playing Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1, way back then, right? Eight years ago plus. So, and because I was in there breathing all the time, it was, my CO2 levels were like a thousand PPMs always. Just because you're breathing. You guys have seen me shoot 10, 15 mini videos in here, videos in here, and showing my little PO, CO2 monitor right there, and it would be three, 400 above what I set it at. When I'm in here for an hour or so, like trimming and pruning, it's like 2,500. I'm like, I gotta get out sometimes. It's, you know, cause I'll start getting lightheaded and tired just cause it starts to get so high. 3,000 is when I'm like, let me vent some out. Cause that's just excessive, right? 5,000 I think is when it becomes bad for people. But it's an excessive amount and that's just from you breathing. So that's a good way. Put it somewhere where you are, your living space. If you can pull air in from a living space, cause if you're, that's the way you wanna do it, pull air in from your living room and vent it in. Instead of venting in air from outside, Vent in air from your place, vent out to outside, you know, from your living space. That's free CO2. In rooms where you're gonna hang out anyhow, that's free CO2. If you have a basement, grow in your basement, because I've grown in a basement, and the CO2 levels were like 900 at all times, doing nothing at all, and that's with, that's during veg, everything, right? So that's with the plants consuming them, always 900. If we were down there doing stuff, me and a buddy, it would go way, way up. And that's because CO2 is heavier than air, so it would sink through the floorboards, uh, it was at his place, so his family and everything sink right through, always 900. So great free passive CO2. If you have a pilot light, a gas pilot light, be near the pilot light. Don't be so close you're gonna burn your tent down, right? Be, be smart about it, right? Don't, don't start no fires. But that, that CO2, that pilot light is like a little CO2 burner. It's constantly generating CO2. You're gonna have very high ambient levels of CO2 in and around it. So those are some free ways. Use your breath, you would be amazed blow on a CO2 meter twice, like that, swear, it'll be, it'll jump like 800. Like you, you are amazed by how much CO2 we exhale. Now if you use those CO2 grow backs and things like that, I've done my own CO2 buckets in the past with like sugar, yeast, and just that ran a little tube out. And it was all right, me sitting in the grow room just hanging out, chilling, was way better, just being near your plants, listen to Bob Marley, smoke, whatever it is. I actually don't really like smoking in my plants, I'm gonna be honest, it's not great for the plants. I will bring my drinks in there. If I smoke, I'll smoke outside and then go into the plants. Y'all do whatever you want though, right? I just personally would not. I don't like that, my plants are breathing that in. Uh, it ruins the air, it, it, I just wouldn't, right? But you do you. So. Uh, being on the topic of like yeast and grow bags and fungal and all, all those, right? If you guys have experience with those, let me know because I've been wanting to test this out. A lot of people use these, they're very popular in grow tents because you can just hang it, right? It seems very inexpensive, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever it is, one time purchase, but how long does it last? How high does it actually raise your CO2 levels? I don't know, I'm very skeptical about it because I didn't like it when I made my own bucket version. I had to change that out like every three days, I think mix up the yeast and the sugar. It was just really, because once I stopped making bubbles, I was out, right? Because I had a thing that told me, you know, that's, it had to bubble past it and then it would go out. So that way I knew whenever it slowed down or it was out because it would stop pushing air out, you know, in the forms of, or pushing CO2 out. So if you guys have experience with that, let me know what brands, maybe I'll reach out and try to test. I've tried to reach out to Excel, and I think that was CO2 bucket, to see if they'd send me some samples or some directions for my, my cubic space. And I wanted to run it to see how long do they last, what CO2 levels to bring it to. So if you guys have experience, let me know what you've tested because I'm, I'm genuinely curious. And if you guys have recommendations of who you'd like me to try, I'll try to reach out. If not, maybe I'll just put the bill, buy some, and see how long it lasts. Uh, you know, during bloom, I'll wait till my plants are flowering, throw it in there, we'll run a little test, you know, how high did it raise it, how long, and I'll follow the directions to the T. So this in a nutshell, I don't wanna ramble. Uh, that's, you know, can you run CO2 in a tent? Yeah, it's not very ideal though, but those are the situations in which I would do it. Placing your tent in a room that you can seal, the, you know, seal that room would be the best way. Uh, placing your tent in areas where you can, you know, grow uh, with ambient CO2 that are, that's naturally high from either occupants in your house, yourself included, breathing out CO2, or in areas that are naturally enriched in CO2, such as a basement or near a pilot light. If your pilot light's in a basement, bam, do that gonna be good and that'd be better as well for running your own CO2 because it's not gonna, it's less likely for it to go up the stairs and out the room, right? It's gonna wanna stay in your room, you know, much easier. So you don't really even have to seal the room that well. Maybe seal the door, if you have the door just to help. But aside from that, it's really not needed, right? Cause it's already down below the ground. Everything's gonna drop in. So it's pretty ideal. But that's it, I am starting to ramble. So I'm gonna end it here. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know, otherwise, Peace out, YouTube. As always, guys, have a great one, guys.